Thanks. All right, good morning. Welcome, everybody. We're excited about uh, Saturday and hosting number one Clemson, defending national champion. Uh, they've only won 17 games in a row, um, so they come in here as the, as the top-ranked team in the country. It's a great opportunity for our community, for our university, and for our program uh, to be on the main stage, which is ABC primetime game. Uh, I'm thrilled that Sean McDonough, uh, an alum who's also receiving the Aarons Award, which is the most distinguished an award an alumnus, alumnus can receive, that Sean will be uh, honored Friday night, then he'll be doing the game. It's the first time Kirk Herbstreet, who really is the voice, recognized nationally as the voice in college football, that Kirk has called a game at the Dome, so we're excited for that. Um, I'll just give you a couple facts and, and rundowns on the day, and then we'll let Pete talk. Uh, to you about some other things. We have less than 175 tickets left for the game. Uh, those can be our all-season tickets, so fans still have the opportunity to purchase season tickets, to purchase uh, uh, so they could see Clemson. All gates at the Dome will be open. Obviously, it's a special night because in addition to hosting Clemson, we're going to honor one of our great uh, alumnus of the university, Tim Green, who's a three-time All-American in football, three-time academic All-American, the Liverpool, New York native, and I think it's going to be a really special moment and one that our fans will remember for years when we honor Tim at halftime. We're also going to celebrate the 60th anniversary of our 1959 national championship team, and we'll do that during the first quarter, and we're thrilled to uh, welcome back members of that team. Um, in terms of some scheduling, uh, 3 p.m. parking lots open uh, for the game. From 3 to 6.30 up at Skytop, Country Swag will perform. Uh, and there's a Geico, Geico Fan Interactive uh, display at Skytop as well. At 4 p.m., shuttles from all parking lots in the North Campus begin. Cuse and the Quad opens at 4 p.m. It was uh, very, very well received in a popular pregame destination last year. We want to repeat that. Uh, we have national artist Eric Cheshire is going to perform for Cuse and the Quad. Also, the American Football Coaches Association uh, Championship Trophy will be on display. And with that, uh, Dwight Freeney, one of our great uh, defensive ends ever in the history of Syracuse football, will be back for that as well. At 5.30, gates to the dome open. Uh, at 5.45, the band will play on the quad. And uh, at 7.30, we kick it off. So, Again, we're excited. Uh, we encourage fans to leave their homes early to allow plenty of time to get to uh, to get wherever they're parking, whether uh, uh, the dome, sky top, et cetera, that type of thing. This is going to be the largest crowd that we've had here in decades, which is absolutely fantastic. But fans should give themselves extra time to uh, to get to the stadium. And obviously, with Cuse on the quad and other activities we have, they come up. There's going to be plenty of entertainment and fun for them to participate in. So, we look forward to it. I'm going to let Pete talk about some uh, other specifics as well. Pete, thank you, John. <laughs> How exciting is this? I remember 1980 when we opened the dome. There's more going on, I think, outside uh, for this game and, and surrounding the game than. I can ever remember in the history of this uh, university and the, and the athletic department. What a, what a great atmosphere, what a great vibe, right? This reminds me of the Nebraska game. It's just incredible to have this many tickets out. It's what we do, it's what the building was built for, so we're excited about it. I'll just reiterate a couple of the things that are important to us um, on the dome side of the house. So um, again, the parking lots, anything Dome West is pre-sold, so please go to Skytop parking area. Um, again, those lots open up at 3 o'clock. We encourage you to get there early. A lot going on on the quad. Um, one of the things we want to bring to everybody's attention is, I don't know if you've noticed when you've driven by the dome, but there's a big crane down there. Um, and there's one that's much like it that went up in the air today on the back side of the dome. Um, pretty much almost the exact same size. So in order to put that in place, you have to build some pretty big areas to support that weight. So it's kind of pushed us out a little bit on that gate N E M P side. So if you're used to coming in that side, there's going to be a change of traffic flow. We've moved our metal detectors and our security screening out towards the quad a little bit to help with pedestrians getting in and out of the building. Um, we think that's going to really enhance the game day experience. We've also created a little bit of a perimeter outside the, the facility for people to maybe move around a little bit outside of the game, outside the facility once they've been through the screening. 
which makes a nice, nice area for people to maybe go outside for some fresh air gates. We know it's going to be awful uh, and stuffy in the building. It always is, and people want to go outside. If you see, we're encouraging people to bring a couple bottles of water with them. But again, the clear bag policy is in place. We'll have a lot of people around the building guiding people into the facility, uh, making sure they understand the changes that you'll see with the construction going on. So we'll have our team members outside around the physics building, around the new barn center, out towards the uh, quad area, over towards Falk, all those different areas guiding you in to give you direction as you come forward. We want to make it as easy as possible for fans to get to the building. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Sue had asked me earlier that um, on Friday evening, we have the uh, grand opening of the Barn Center at the Arch. Um, love to see everybody there, 3.30 event. Um, it is a dedication for all that building is, and it is absolutely spectacular. Um, a re rebirth of the original building where the crew room is, the crew tank, that space was also renovated. I'll say it again, if you have been in the arch in the past, you will not think you're in the same building. It is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. We'll take questions if you raise your hand, we'll move around. Jeff? Happy to take questions. Jeff? I was going to say, Jeff, I know you're up here now, but um, I was actually going to dovetail a little bit on what Pete was talking about. So, um, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, people can see, the, they can see the one crane, and you now see two cranes in the air. For people uh, who maybe have not been to the dome in quite a while, even people who have regularly, they might be a bit intimidated by the look and the change of the exterior of the building. Give me your top two or three things that you would say, here's what you need to know to get in and out of this building on Saturday efficiently for you and for you and, and your staff. It'll, it'll look the same on the west side as you come up because the visiting team buses will be where they typically are, but that entire area has been transformed. So there is only one access point to gate B from the west area as you walk up the hill on the left. You'll be able to get to gate B in, in, as the, the set of stairs that face to the west, but just a little bit different movement there. The stairs that, that are up between gate a, B and A are still available and fully open. The stairs on the northwest corner that lead you up to the gate C area, to the JKLM, that north side of the dome, are open. Um, and again, that flow is as it was. We have added um, three new gates to our list of uh, accessible gates to the dome. Gate M is accessible if you're in a chair and you're coming where you have mobility challenges. Gate, gate N is in Nancy, um, and gate A and, 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 and gate G and also stadium control. So there are many access points for people that have uh, mobility challenges and we encourage them now that they don't have to all go to two gates. Pretty much because the majority of people I imagine are coming off the shuttle from the sky top and everything. So from that perspective, Pretty much the same. So the sky top side of the house that where you come in from the east side is drastically different from a, when you get around the corner of the physics building. So you'll see our, our metal detectors and our, and our security people out between the arch and physics. We're actually going to create a new area there on Thursday and then over by the Ernie Davis statue there'll be another area over there. That will allow us to increase the size of our perimeter of where we have people that have gone through the detectors. Another thing that hasn't happened in over a year is we are going to open up the space for pedestrian traffic only between the arch and the dome. Um, that'll be opening up midweek this week or finishing the construction there. Um, again, it's for this game because of the amount of fans that we have, we need to get through that corner. We thought it was important that we open that up. As we go forward, it will be game by game. Decision made on whether or not the construction is happening there. As steel goes up, that could or could not go away. And then as you come between Heroy and Falk, it's easier for me to bounce off all these buildings because I'm there every day, but as you come up from probably Marshall Street and you come up through the, the, the university, through the center of campus, there will still be that space between Steel Hall and, and the Heroy where you can come right in and go right in by Gate D and then farther to the uh, west that will, that will also be open. But again, the perimeter is farther out, so there's much more room for people to gather outside the building in a casual atmosphere. Nico. And this can be for both Pete and Johnny. Obviously, the dynamic of preparing for any big game, really any game, is a huge undertaking that a lot of people don't see. But then you're combining that with the construction, new concessions, and everything you're talking about here. What has that been like trying to prepare for this home opener with, you know, which is already busy with all the extra things that you're dealing with right now? Well, I'll, I'll respond first, Nico, then I'll, I'll let Pete is. Kudos to Pete and his team, because they've, they've done a phenomenal job, because you have an incredibly complicated construction project that's going on, and here we are staging events simultaneously. 
And obviously we've got the biggest home football game we've had here in arguably 20 years. And the work that they've done to, to make this happen and with the emphasis on trying to make it as fan-friendly as possible on Saturday, they've done a fantastic job. So I'll let Pete answer your question, but he and his team have been, have been tremendous, and I'm thankful. I, I think, Nico, the challenging part is the building's closed every day till 6 o'clock, right? So how do we get, uh, you know, how do we get Clemson's equipment staff in? How do we get the Clemson team in the building? And then how does ESPN come in and set up? So that has been very challenging to us. I, I will say that we've been talking about this since July with both of them. Um, we knew this game was coming. Um, ESPN has been wonderful to work with. I believe the number in John, I, I believe it's, there's 36 cameras going to be inside the facility. People are going to see the, you know, the sky cam, which we've never had for football. So we set that up about two months ago, getting ready for this event. We needed to get in certain areas with the construction going on. We can only get in there at certain times. So you'll see some things happening after 6 o'clock to tell the ESPN group, hey, you, your team needs to stay outside Thursday and Friday till 6 o'clock. That's challenging for them. They're used to it. They were amazing to work with. They totally get it. Um, again, there's steel going up as we speak, going overhead. So that's challenging. But I think we've got, I, I know we have a great plan um, and able to get the visiting team in. Nothing will change for them as far as entering the building. Um, and we've been working with Sue because Sue has some things that go on after the game that were um, challenging for her as well. But I think we've figured it all out. It's, there is an, every day there's three meetings that happen with the contractors to talk about where we are and how we're moving students and staff and fans around the building. Chris. Uh, John, I know you mentioned you had uh, 175 tickets left. They're all yeah. seasons. Correct. Is there any chance that single games would be made available later in the week or you're going to keep them as seasons? Regardless? Right now, Chris, uh, season tickets, but potentially later in the week, if we still have a few left, we might, uh, we would consider single game. But our focus is selling the season tickets right now. John, uh, as far as uh, tailgating, um, will that be allowed at Skytop here at Manly? And are there restrictions as far as alcohol goes? Is, will DPS kind of court people into certain areas? Yeah, you know, I think, yes, there will be tailgating um, at Manly, at Skytop, et cetera, that type of thing. We really encourage people, have some fun there, and then come to QS in the quad. It's a great pregame destination before you go in, uh, before you go in the dome. Um, obviously, yeah, we always, we always want people you know, to be responsible, right? Have fun, but re be responsible. Our fans in the past have been fantastic, and I have every confidence that uh, it'll be a festive, uh, but it'll be a fan-friendly atmosphere on Saturday. This is maybe more for Pete than John, but you mentioned the challenges of, you know, getting clubs in, into the dome, you know, for walkthrough ahead of time, getting the ESPN set up. I guess without maybe sharing specific details, how creative have you had to get in solutions for that with, you know, getting the production truck where it needs to be and all the cameras? And I, I mean, it's it's... As far as the ESPN side of the house goes, I mean, it's they've been very creative on some new camera angles, so we've worked with them very closely to, to figure that all out. We did it early on. They came up in early August to look at the entire venue. We've done some of the camera things before, but there's some new things. You see on this Prime game, there's a pylon cams and ref hat cams. And there's many, many things that, you know, that will be part of this game. But I think from the Clemson side is getting their equipment from the Loney Dock area to their locker room giving them staff to do that, making sure it's flawless for them, mm -hmm. working with Kyle and our team to make sure that, that they help us. There's no crisscross of the two teams going back and forth. But it's, again, it's, it's all teamwork. Um, it's people we work with every day. We know the people from Clemson, and they've been up a couple times. And, um, you know, Kyle's team and Jim Schlinsker from the equipment crew are first class. So um, th those things, we're going to help staff that. Okay. John, another question. Uh, sure. As far as the game day, uh, Obviously, this is a national game in which the entire country gets to see things. Do you have discussions beforehand with ESPN about what you refer to the Dome as? Because I know there's been a lot of discussion about area domes, the domes, the Loud House. Do you have discussions about what they say going forward? I, I don't. And again, it's it's great to have that national stage. You know, like you said, that platform. and. I watched quite a bit of LSU Texas on Saturday, and it was a great atmosphere there. And it was referenced numerous times by Reese Davis and, and Kirk during the telecast. We want to replicate that here. The other thing, this is a really, really big, important recruiting weekend for us as well. 
So we, you know, we need the Dome to be the Loud House on Saturday because we want to show the nation the pride that we have in our program. And we have recruits on campus. You know, an atmosphere like that can make a lasting impression. Chris? Um, I'm not sure who this would be better for, but, but Pete, you mentioned kind of extending the perimeter out with security. Um, are you encouraging people to gather inside that perimeter, or is it just something they can do? I think it's just something they can do, and I think it's an option for them when the game is going on that if they need to go out and stretch their legs or get some fresh air, it's something we're going to allow them to do. Sure. So the schedule's right now right on. We're, we're very happy about schedule. Um, the, uh, we're in the process right now of constructing the uh, tension ring, which is what the Crown Trust will hook to. So it's basically another ring beam that you see on top of the existing ring beam, right? But it's out of steel this time instead of concrete. Um, the X bracing has been is 100% complete as we move through the, the process. We're, we're right where we need to be. There'll be two very large concrete pours on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week to um, basically encase that uh, rebar and everything that's tied to the to the to the x bracing um, that's to actually strengthen the existing ring beam so if you know if we've already put up seven pieces of the of the tension ring um, and again there's 36 of those that go around so that second crane that goes up that went up will take care of that quarter of the building on the north side there'll be a time in October early November where that will be dismantled and it will be reconstructed over by gate GH and F that same pad that you see over by gate N and P will have to be reconstructed before that. So they actually after the Clemson game, because we know that we, the, the student gate and the importance of that gate area for this event, we're going to start construction of that the Monday after the Clemson game. When will we see the first pick of the actual truss itself? Am I using the right terminology for truss? Yeah, I think oh, that, oh. Um, I think you'll see pieces of that in, um, you know, probably early November. Oh, Jeff, I think it's, well, it's Orange Central, number one, so it's homecoming. So we've got a record number of alumni coming back. Um, and there'll be 50,000 people in the building, and Lord knows how many people will be outside the building, kind of as Pete referenced with the Nebraska game way back when. Um, but I think you know, the game sells itself, right, and it's what you do around the game. And, again, I think you know, with Cuse and the quad, the entertainment we have up at Skytop, uh, what we've done in terms of the concessions update and refresh, expanding the menu items, expanding the menu offers, um, letting fans bring in a couple bottles of, of, of water, um, et cetera, that type of thing. If they need to go out, as Pete said, to stretch their legs, get some fresh air, they can do that. But I just, you know, we really want to make this, it's a, a festival atmosphere and just a weekend that the entire community can really embrace and celebrate. Absolutely. How do we make this feel bigger than just what's in that? Well, and that's, and that's part of it. And I've, Bill Bedell is the game producer, and Billy grew up at Syracuse, right? And he's, uh, he's a Syracuse alum, and he's, uh, he's a very close personal friend. And Bill and I, we had a couple conversations last week. And then Derek Mobley, who's the game director, um, you know, th those two guys, they're as good as any crew in the country, whether it's college football, NFL. They're as good a production team as there is. They'll communicate you know, with Mike uh, Morrison and Sue Edson um, and our marketing staff. So everything that we have, you know, in terms of it's special for this game, they'll know about. Chris. Um, John, obviously, first sellout maybe since 1998, probably. Um, the record new season ticket sales, those are all new, um, new revenue coming in. Is that enough? Is it enough that it makes a tangible impact on your budget? next year or does it have to kind of sustain for a couple of years before you can really count on it well it certainly helps this year chris there's no question um and that you know one of the keys we had a 95 percent renewal rate as well so next year as we look at the 20 season you know the renewal rate it's great we've got 91 new 9100 new season ticket holders we've got to renew that and that's going to be a challenge for our sales staff but 
Those are the challenges. You'd like to have those challenges. Those are really good challenges to have. We haven't, we, Jeff, we don't have it yet. Okay. Any final questions? Andrew, last question. Continuing on the number without a specific over or under 50,000? Well, I can't, I can't, I'm not ready to comment on it yet. <laughs> but it'll be, it'll be, it'll be one of the largest crowds in the history of the Dome. There's no question about that. So we look forward to it. Thank you, John. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for coming, everybody. We appreciate your time. Thanks, today. everybody. Look forward to a great week. Thanks, John. And Coach Babers will be in for his weekly 1130 media opportunity. For those who are staying, you're welcome to stay in your seats.